This meeting is being recorded. Welcome everyone, this is Jyoti Dodia and I'm really pleased to have Stuart Cunliffe here today to deliver today's webinar session as part of the Power Virtual User Group series. Uh, today Stuart's going to be talking about IBM Cloud Private and IBM Cloud Automation Manager and how you can use both of those to help deliver multi-cloud environments with containers and virtual machines. Without further ado, over to you, Stu. Thank you, Jyoti. Um, thank you, Ari, for joining. Um, so what we're going to do today, as Jyoti mentioned, was I'm going to briefly discuss um, ICP and um, how CAM relates to that. So I work in lab services in the UK, and we, we do a couple of ICP engagements. And we're talking to customers about how CAM can integrate ICP into their wider enterprise type environment. So hopefully um, this will give you some view of where CAM fits in, how to install CAM, how to use CAM. Um, any issues or any questions, obviously put them into the chat box or I'll put my Twitter handle down there or I, should, I think my email is on the invite. So you can feel free to, to drop me an email. So let me start so this is what i want to cover in the next hour is i'm going to give a quick high level review of icp i know tom watts did an icp virtual user group presentation um end of last summer i believe it was uh, where he covered what icp was in detail and um, um how they used the uh, deployment through that so uh, if you want to see that in more detail i think josie put the link to tom's uh, youtube presentation in the invite so please feel free to review that well, I'll cover it for a few minutes and then I'm going to go into where IBM Cloud Automation Manager fits within ICP and our wider power type environment, how we install CAM, um, how we can connect multiple clouds to CAM, and then I've got some demonstrations around um, uh, what CAM can do around the template side and on the services side. So we'll crack on. So quick review of IBM Cloud Private. So Hopefully you know where the IBM Cloud Private is a, um, a containerized control platform for developing running um, workloads locally on on premises, and the fact that we can it's um, a Kubernetes control, so we we use the the underlying Docker containerization and the Kubernetes control on top of that. So the the ICP package integrates Kubernetes. The, we we have our own private image repository, our Helm charts that we can use for downloading. Um, typical applications. There's a nice management console around it, which is very common to users of IBM consoles nowadays. You'll recognize it. And a monitoring framework around what ICP, ICP takes care of. If it restarts um, Docker containers, it can control it, it can monitor it. Um, and obviously, it's the deployment side of, of ICP for scaling our applications. So, Docker itself is, is containerized. Um, operating systems level virtualization. It's very lightweight, often used as just an executable package around an application, but obviously around that we can use um, um, persistent containers to run our application, should we, in some sort of um, 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 scale out type of environment. So we have two versions of, well, there are two versions of Docker available, Community Edition and Enterprise Edition, and um, we deliver this as a sort of platform as a service type cloud environment. So Kubernetes is the is the controlling item around um, around Docker. So Kubernetes was released by Google um, a few years ago, I think it is now. Um, it, it, its job is to maintain the containers, run the containers, manage the applications that the containers are running, and basically provide the platform around the infrastructure of a service. So ICP is the, if we just think of it as a, the, the Docker containerization and the Kubernetes side control around that, along with all the images and the management interface that IBM provide. Key to understanding where CAM fits into this, uh, a few things I brought up here within Kubernetes, there's, I think in Tom's presentation, there was an awful lot of um, areas around what Kubernetes and Docker delivers. 
these are the three that I want to concentrate on today so we understand how CAM integrates. So we have pods, so we, we, we know what a container is. A container is a, is a single entity of um, an application or an image. What a pod is, is a collection of those um, containers. Now often a pod is a one-to-one -one, um, mirroring, so a container is one pod, but sometimes you can have multiple containers within a pod. They're tightly coupled together. A service is when we um, we have a set of pods and we need access to them. We have a, an IP address assigned to that service, and Kubernetes' job is to make sure that that service and those underlying pods are kept available and um, for, for when they're needed. And a Helm chart is um, a collection of files that describe the end state of a Kubernetes resource. So some of the some of the Helm charts that we see within ICP are very very simple, maybe just a, a one page single single um, container deployment, maybe HTTP, but some of them are more complex. And one of those more complex Helm charts is CAM. So CAM is delivered via a Helm chart. So one of the key things to remember. Within ICP, there are a number of nodes that we need to have an existing environment, ICP environment. Now, you can con condense these down onto only one or two nodes, but obviously this will affect any sort of availability and resilience. So we have a boot node, which is as a bootstrap node for running the installation configuration. Um, and we have a master node, which is provides the services and controls around our worker nodes. Now we can condense our boot node, our master node, and even our proxy node together, should we need to, to a single effectively management node or master node. And then we have the worker nodes. So the worker nodes are where the work is really done. So where the containerized environment runs for your environment. So we have a number of worker nodes. Obviously, the more worker nodes we have, then we can improve performance and efficiency. We can mix and match our worker nodes. Our worker nodes don't just have to be power. They can be x86 or z. And obviously, when we deploy a Helm chart or deploy a resource, it will work out what type of environment it wants to go to on the worker node. Does it want to go to power? Does it want to go to x86? And these are the types of nodes that we can have. So the architecture around them. So we can't have any of the management nodes on Z, but we can now have all the management nodes on power. And we've always been able to have the management nodes on x86. So these are Linux based uh, nodes. So and our worker nodes can be across the whole architecture. So as you say, when we define a Helm chart, you'll notice in one of the Helm chart deployments I'm doing later, we can see which architecture we want them to choose when they deploy that Helm chart. So my environment in, in London looks a bit like this at the moment. I have got a number of power servers um, in the gray boxes here, and I have a single master and boot node at the moment. I could split those out, but this is purely for a, a demonstration lab. Um, at the moment, that is adequate for me. The user interface that you will see in a minute connects directly to that master and boot node. I, this is, so this is a Red Hat VM. I've got another couple of Red Hat VMs on other servers as worker nodes. So these are the ones that do the grunt of the work and run the containerized applications that we want to look at and in the end run CAM as well. These are connected by via our servers to our network and our storage. They could be dedicated um, servers. We don't we could run them in bare metal mode if we wanted to. We don't have to run them in power VM mode. We can run them on KVM, we can run them on Nutanix, and a couple of the solutions that you'll um, I advise that you'll see later on. So that's all well and good. So what happens though if we want to do a little bit more with that type of environment? It's ICP is good for what it is does for what it's used for, sorry, what it's is its um, microservices environment ideal for a lot of applications. But what happens if we've got a more a classic type of environment? Then here we've got a like in my London environment, I've also got a PowerVC server, which is open stack based PowerVC, which can deliver um, VMs. It can deliver AX, Linux, Red Hat, Slash VMs. These are the sort of true VMs that do the grunt of the work, maybe a bit more enterprise type applications, Oracle, maybe um, SAP HANA, these type of environments. Now, ICP can't deliver those. So what we would have, we would have an ICP environment and we would have a PowerVC environment. So we would have effectively two separate environments driving installations, driving um, rollouts of new applications or test environments, development applications. So not ideal for what we want. This is where we, it, 
CAM comes into it. So we, we might even have a more complex type of cloud environment. So we've got our power servers here. We've got an ITP containerized environment that runs across those power servers. We've also got Power VC or which delivers our VMs or LPARs across Slides Linux, AAX, um, IBMI. We might also have an x86 environment on a customer site, which I've got a vSphere environment in London as well, which has got a number of x86 servers, which can deliver Windows and Linux on our x86 servers. Now, what if we've also got a public cloud offering? So the customer is using public cloud, maybe it's IBM Cloud, maybe it's AWS from Amazon. We've got an awful lot of different environments there that if we want to do and deploy to, we've got a lot of different uh, front ends that will look a lot of different driving applications. So let's class these as off-premise and on-premise. This is where CAM comes in and CAM sits in the middle and allows us to have multi-cloud connections to different types of environments using Terraform provider. So it, it has cloud connections to Terraform. Terraform is a very, com well, it's a very um, what's the word to use, it, it, it's industry-wide, the fact that it's provided uh, it can connect to multiple different providers, include Amazon Web, IBM Cloud, OpenStack, ICP, vSphere. You'll see the list in a minute. But So what is CAM? So CAM, the market side of CAM, it says it's a multi-cloud self-service platform running on IBM Cloud that empowers developers and administrators to run the business plan. What it really means is it allows you to have a single point of control to do a multi-cloud management around your uh, your estate, your cloud estate. It is ICP based. So this is key to remember. It actually is a set of containers, a set of pods that run within ICP that um, can connect to multiple clouds across your environment, whether those be public or private. So ICP is ideal for CAM because CAM is, I don't know if those who remember um, IBM Cloud Orchestrator a couple of years ago was quite a complex product to install and deliver. Um, there was um, a number of services that came with it. So because of the way ICP works, it is able to break CAM out into microservices. And you'll see in a minute how many different types of microservices there are within CAM and how ICP delivers those. If we look where CAM sits within IBM Cloud, it's the multi-cloud infrastructure support. So we've got our IBM Cloud private at the bottom, our core services, our Kubernetes infrastructure, our self-service catalog that ICP already has. CAM is one of those self-service catalog um, items that delivers through our Helm chart, and it delivers those items in the box at the top. So it's a complex Helm chart. I'll show you in a little bit. And um, it leverages IBM Cloud Private for cloud, cloud private for those services. So if we look at the box on the right, we can see the, the service and template library that we're going to discuss today. So how we create our templates, and how we create our services how we manage those through the template management um, section of, um, of, of CAM. And it uses those via, it calls up Helm charts from ICP, or it uses the Terraform charts available for non-ITP type environments. I'll describe that a little bit in a, in a, in a later. It has at the top, it has a, a flow engine, in other words, the service composer, so the orchestration side of it. So, this is this is what differentiates it from a lot of environments is the fact that we can we can say build one type of service here in a, maybe ICP, one type of service maybe in the public cloud, and one type of service in your private cloud. So we can bolt those together with inside a service composer. And from a hardware perspective, it can manage a number of clouds. We've got the bottom, so we've, we've listed IBM Cloud, um, OpenStack, which is PowerVC, Amazon Web Services. So. It can it can it can control multiple clouds. So the key features I think we've discussed most of these is the fact that we um, we have simple installation via the Helm chart. We connect to more providers and we use Terraform. Now I'm going to discuss Terraform in a little bit just to give you a brick overview of how Terraform differs from Helm charts. But if you think of Helm charts as containers and if you think of Terraform as everything else, so Terraform is all your VMs or your public cloud, or your private cloud, in other words, your OpenStack PowerVC type environment. And it's a um, um, infrastructure as a service code which delivers it, a file to show you what you want your infrastructure and your environment to look like. And then we're gonna show how it can connect into 
CAM can connect into um, flat files to get the configuration, or we can use GitHub to pull down the information. And what we can also desc describe is how we build a service around the orchestration side of CAM. And we can use that service once we've created it, we can publish it up back up to ICP. So IP ICP can see a dedicated service which might be deploying VMs in the public cloud, or it might be deploying VMs in your private cloud. So at this point, let me see if this works. And here we go. So we briefly discussed ICP. So I'm going to quickly go through what my ICP looks like. You saw it on that slide earlier. Where's my cursor? There it is. <clears throat> so I think you'll recognize the screen and those who've used it before or from Tom's. So we've got our dashboard here. We've got some catalog information and then the main drive is down here. So if I go down to platform down here, you can see my nodes. I've got a single node, which is proxy management master ACD. And then I've got two worker nodes. It tells me they're both PPC64 Little Engine. They're both scheduled and they were created a number of days ago. From the same environment, I can look at storage. So I've got a number of um, uh, defined storage here. Some of them are host paths. Some of them you'll see are related to CAM. Some of them are PVC related. So what I've got, I've got a flexible volume driver within, within an ICP that connects to my PowerVC infrastructure. So when I want a, a, a um, persistent storage, I can ask ICP to ask PowerVC for it. So PowerVC on the worker node builds a new LUN from my, my, SV, my V7000 and attaches that LUN to my worker node. That means that my containers within my worker node can then go and use that dedicated persistent LUN that I've created. And what happens is when a when a, um, a container or a pod makes a claim, it gets hold of that persistent volume that I've created. So here you'll see a number of persistent volumes that have been claimed by certain um, instances down the left-hand side. So we have under workloads, we have a number of Helm releases now. Helm releases are deployed from a Helm catalog, which I will show you in a second. So if we look at these Helm releases, so it's just spinning. It should get there in a second. It's got quite a lot of instances on my... Um, on my Whilst hand. we're waiting, I was just going to um, remind people that if they have any questions or comments, to enter them into the chat window uh, and please select to everyone so we can um, see it. Thank you. No worries. Thank you, JT. So here are my Helm releases that I've deployed across my ICP catalog. And you can see that if I look down, I can see that I've got some Oracle instances that were being run. I've got Tomcat Liberty. And if you go further down, these are the ones that have been built by default by ICP. These are the ones that I've created. Now you'll notice, for example, when you deploy a Helm chart, it, it deploys those Helm charts from your, um, your repository. It, it, recognizes when a new release comes in. So if I look at this uh, WebSphere Liberty um, Helm release that got created, it tells me that I've got a version update available should I require it. So I can click on upgrade and it will go away and apply that new Helm chart on this service, this Liberty service that I've got down here. And then if it doesn't work or I don't like it, I can roll back to the, the previous version should I need to. It gets these from it gets these Helm releases from this catalog up here. If we go back to the the catalog information, we can filter the catalog information on architecture type and whichever repository it came from. So if I look at catalog, these are all. It must make it a bit smaller. Sorry. So. These are all the Helm charts available via when I when you install ICP Enterprise Edition. And if I go to the right hand side here, I can filter on ones that are available on power systems, for example, and it shows me a list of these. So if I look at something like IBM Microclimate, which is a um, uh, a tool for developing applications within ICP. It tells me the information about it. It tells me here the version numbers that are available. So I can pick on certain versions should I require. Hence, then, when I 
install this, it will recognize that there's newer versions available and I could upgrade it. It also tells me where the source file is. Now these are all on GitHub or GitHub type of repository. So I can save that file and then I can go in and look at the, the Helm chart that is available for microclimate. So hopefully you can see that. And these are just a set of YAML files that describe how the environment should look. Um, obviously these are quite complex. This one I've selected a microclimate one. We can see our, our deployment YAML and we'll see our service YAML down here. So I'm not gonna go into this in detail now because obviously this is just, I could talk about that for another couple of hours. So when we go to deploy it, it tells us all the prerequisites, it's gonna tell us what it needs to be done. We click on configure and we put the information in away and it goes. Now, once that's deployed, we then see it back in our workloads again. But what I wanted to show you here was, was this. So if we look under count, we can see IBM Cloud Automation Manager is available within our IBM Charts catalog. So once you've installed ICP, then the IBM Cloud Automation Manager um, information is available. Our Helm release is available. Our Helm chart is available to deploy. Now, it's correct. I have got a new version available, should I want to. It's a little bit of a mismatch from 3.1.1 actually delivers 3.1.2. But it tells you down here what you need within CAM. The only real thing you do need is, is storage. So when you go to configure this, you give it a release name, let's call this test cam. We put it into the appropriate same um, namespace, accept the license, and then we give it the, the image that we're gonna pull and we're gonna give it an API secret. Now, all this, the actual step-by-step -step installation instructions are, are well documented on Knowledge Center. Um, I've also got them in PowerPoint presentations if anybody wants to see them. You go away and click on install and it goes away it goes away and does the install within about 20 or 30 minutes for you so that's icp that's the helm chart and that's what it's going to be that's what a, a helm chart does when it wants to install uh, and in our case it wants to install um, cam so if i pop back to the presentation what i'm going to do is i'm just going to talk you through a little bit about what it's doing in the, in the background before we look at what happens when CAM has installed. So obviously I've got a running version already there. We don't want to be waiting 25, 30 minutes. Um, Mike, uh, can CAM work with Red Hat OpenShift as well as ICP? Um, um, yes, I will. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to remember the right the way around this is whether ICP can be added as a um, an OpenShift module or whether um, OpenShift can be added as an ICP module. Um, let me get the information for you, Mike, I'll get back to you. So Terraform. Terraform is a way of delivering infrastructure as code. So you define in a file what you want your end infrastructure, end environment to look like. So it's a, we have things called providers, and the providers are all common clouds and include those providers. So a provider could be IBM, a provider could be OpenStack, a provider could be ICP, could be AWS. Um, it's highly maintained. It's one of the, the fastest growing applications that I've used recently. It lets you define in the left-hand side, you can see, for example, resource, I'm going to build a, a, um, a vSphere virtual machine in this case. It's got some variables that it's passed from another file within the, the Terraform environment, and it's got a network interface. It's got disks, what it can what it can grow. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is because when we look at the um, the Terraform files later on, you'll be able to see exactly what they they look like. There are a number of open source libraries that we can use within Terraform. So a lot of these are based on a um, public cloud, so VMware, IBM Cloud. We can create our own. There's a number already in um, in CAM that deliver Pat4i Power VC, or I can show you some of the ones that I've created via GitHub. And then we can bring our own self-written IBM schematics and our own Terraform code in there. And it's not difficult to write Terraform. It's not difficult to it, uh, to create your own infrastructure within Terraform scripts and define that as a template within CAM. We'll show you how that's done. 
So the installation itself, so we've got, um, obviously we have to have IBM Cloud Private as it's a CAM is delivered as a, as a service, as a number of pods. It can be done on ESX, KVM, PowerVM, um, and the Helm charts, the latest version is 3.1.2, and the Docker images are supported within um, Enterprise Edition, which is available by Passport, and some via Community Edition by IBM Charts and Helm Repository. The only thing you need to set up are four persistent volumes. So you can have, a, I've got them as host paths, so I've just got them as file systems effectively on my worker nodes. But you can at the bottom use PowerVC flexible volume driver to be able to do it. We can use NFS if we want, GlusterGFS or Spectrum Connect for ESS. That's, those are the four volumes that CAM needs to install. Um, and then I've just shown you that screen on the PowerVC installation to use. So let's go back to that. We saw the catalog, we saw how we install it. Once, where's my cursor gone? Once it's gone back, we can see it under Helm releases. So under Helm releases, um, we, we obviously didn't do the test CAM deployment that we did earlier, but the one I did a number of days ago, let me just see how long ago that was. Well, we can see 12th of April, okay, it's updated 12th of April. So here is my CAM deployment, my CAM Helm chart. So it tells me a little bit of information on the front screen. It tells me I'm currently on 3.1.0. I could go up to 3.1.1 if I want. If I click on it, it takes me into it from ICP view. And it tells me quite a lot of information about what this Helm chart has delivered. It's delivered a, um, a, a broker service, some config maps, and look at all these different deployments. In other words, all these different pods down here, well, all services around the pods. We've got the four um, persistent volumes that it needed to be able to do that. And then these are all the actual names of the pods. So and I'm not sure how many there, looks like about 20 pods in total there. And then the bottom, you'll see all the services. So these are the services, so the IP connections through to each of those pods. And one of the ones you'll notice is this bottom one, the CAM proxy pod. So it's redirected port 30,000 to be able to um, communicate with our CAM server. So if we look at any of these, for example, let's look at Armory DB within CAM. It tells us information about it. It tells us um, the labels it's got. It tells us how many replicas it's got, whether they're available or not the IP, the port it's using, and the replica sets that we could use within that. Now, this is all quite complex for ICP, but it tells us, links us back to the pod in the end, and then the pod, as I said, has a number of containers. In this case, like most cases within CAM, it's a one-to-one relationship. So there's a single container running our MariaDB for IBM CAM, okay? And that's up and running fine. So if we look back on it again, let's, in fact, let's go back to, um, I'm not going to go. I'm going to go all the way back to Helm releases, unfortunately. So now I could connect to the CAM directly by just using the IP address and putting thirty thousand on the end, because as we've seen, the thirty thousand is redirected to our CAM instance. But what I wanted to just show you was connecting to it via here. So at the end of our Helm releases, we've got a launch button. Launch button, as you see, it just puts the three thirty thousand, and we're in CAM. We've logged into CAM, so we're effectively connecting to a pod within our own ICP environment. So we've now got CAM installed. CAM's running on those 19, 20 different pod services, um, and we've got a connection. So what is the first thing we need to do? So we need to connect CAM to a cloud. So let's go back to our slide deck. If I can bring, oh, I've gone too far. So this is our configuration used. So we have the idea of cloud connections. So the, the CAM instance can now connect to as many multiple clouds as we want within reason, and it can go and start using the templates that are defined in it. So as we've seen here, we've got cloud connections on the right hand side, we've got templates for deployment specification, and we've got services. So this is the main pit we want to cover. So creating a cloud connection. So these are all the options of cloud connections that you could do within CAM. So let's go on to our instance and show you this. 
So we've got cloud connection page, which is a front end. You'll recognize it as very, very similar to ICP, very similar to a lot of IBM GUIs nowadays, but it's very, very easy to use. There's only really three sections. There's library, deployed instances, and manage. So under manage, we've got cloud connections. And what you'll see here is I've got a number of cloud connections already defined. So I've got an IBM cloud, which I've named, which is actually IBM. So this is the IBM public cloud. This is soft layer, blue mix, whatever you want to call it. I've got my ICP environment, which is a bit strange, but you have to tell it that it has its own ICP environment. So obviously within ICP, we can, we can within CAM, we can control our own ICP. We can control multiple ICPs, hence why it's not there by default. Our OpenStack provider, which is PowerVC, and I've also got my VMware vSphere provider. So if we wanted to create a new one, this is the pull down menu. So these are the options we have here. So we've got Huawei, Google, IBM, Azure, Nutanix. So we've got a fair, a fair collection in here. If we look at one, say, let's look at the IBM Cloud one. Um, oh, sorry. Then Then we can see here that we've got, I've given it a name, we've told it's IBM, I've given it my API, my software username, and uh, it, it's gone away and verified, you'll see with the, the green tick here, verified that it's got access to that cloud. And then the PowerVC one, if we edit the connection here, we can see that I've given it the URL of my PowerVC server, the user ID one to connect it as, uh, which project name I want to use it. So this is my PowerVC environment here. So you'll recognize that that's the same IP. This is the same instance. And I wanted to go into IBM default group there. And that's where it's gone. So we've now got a cloud connection. OK. So once we've connected the cloud, it, it doesn't pull anything down from that cloud provider. It's just a, a one-way connection to that cloud provider. So where we have to, where can really starts getting useful is these two environments here, templates and services. So a template, now CAM comes with a number of templates. If we think of a template as just a, a Terraform set of code, that's, this is how I want you to deploy my environment and um, um, across my, my infrastructure. So these are all the templates that CAM provides by default. So you'll notice there's some, uh, there's, you go, some Amazon ones. We've got some IBM Cloud ones. You'll notice by the little box at the bottom, it changes the color. There's some vSphere ones, there's some OpenStack ones, um, and there's uh, even Google Cloud ones. But within OpenStack, what you get given by default, if you go down here, is we've got some starter packs. And you'll notice here, there's an IBM PowerVC single virtual machine example. So if we look at that, if we view this template, it's actually based on GitHub. It tells a little bit of information about it. It tells us it's going to build a uh, Ubuntu operating system, an OpenStack, uh, the flavor it's going to use. If we click on the link, it takes us to the GitHub repository for that. So we can look at the files that it's going to use. So so what you can do is you can get this information. You can just cut and paste this information into a, a new t a file on your cam if you want to, to create a new template, or you can create a, um, a GitHub clone from that and, and use your own GitHub clone should you do. Obviously, this one, the username and the passwords and the, the variables it uses. So if we go to the variables, the variables it uses are very unique to the um, to the uh, to this environment that it's going to use. So the image ID, user ID, password, and the output. So if we look at a template that I created, let's have a look at a simple one here. So let's have a look at single AXVM. Now I've not created this from GitHub. I've actually put the the code in myself. If we look in here, we can see that I've got. Um, a resource here, so I've asked it to build. Let me just page down a little bit. I've asked it to build a an OpenStack Compute VM, and it's going to uh, call it SMC App, a random number generator. 
and then it's going to use something called an image ID, image name variable and a flavor name variable, a network variable. So it's going to get those variables from this variable file here. So under parameters, we've got all these variables that I'm passing to it. Now, let's have a look, for example, this. So the OpenStack image name, I've asked it, the default is going to be AX72TL2FP1. Now, it gets that, it goes and queries that from my OpenStack provider. My OpenStack provider is PowerVC. So if I go into uh, images, I should see that one I just asked for. There, there you go. So AX72TL2SP1. So that relates to that particular image. That could be a Linux image. It could be a, a, an IDMI image. Then I've got other variables here, like number of instances, and I've got OpenStack flavor name. And I've called, I have my default is tiny. So back in my PowerVC, it's going to look in my compute templates, and I should have a compute template called tiny, which I do. So that's where it's going to get the information from when it is asked to deploy this template. Now, I do have a number of templates that I created myself on GitHub. So if I look down here, some of these are more complex, but these ones down here, for example, I've got two that are in the IBM cloud. So if I view this template, I've placed it onto GitHub here. So I've so that I can manage it on GitHub, so I can manage it locally or I can manage it remotely in a GitHub type environment. And you'll recognize the same type of information that I've asked it to do. I've given it a host name. I've told it which data center I want it to look for. And I've given it a resources IBM Compute VM instance. Now you'll notice here the provider is IBM. The previous provider was OpenStack because I was going to PowerVC. So this is where Terraform comes into the equation. Okay, so if um, you've seen that the how the, the the template works, so let's have a look at this template. So let's do a um, a deployment of the single template. So the one I showed you earlier, SMC single AX template does exactly what it says in the tin. It creates a 721TL2FP1 tiny template, and we see in the parameters. So if I click on deploy template now, all it says is, okay, I need an instance name that Cam's gonna know it as, so I'm gonna call this SMC demo one. It says, which cloud do you want to go to? Well, I know it's an OpenStack template, so the only OpenStack connection you've got is that. Now. These are in there, these are defaulted in there, the variables are put in there, but I could change them if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but I just wanted to show you the fact that at the moment I could change them. I could change how many I want, the flavor, which network name, and what the OpenStack image username that I want to connect to has. So I'm just gonna click on deploy. That's gonna go away and it's gonna start looking at the Terraform file. So those who know about Terraform, we've got the We've got the plan, the apply, and the other activities going on here. We can view the template file that we're used to if we wanted to. But if we look under log file, we should see it start doing the Terraform. So here we go. Terraform has been initialized. It's doing the creation of a single app VM that we asked. Here's the volume, the information it passed, the volume, image name, the network, the size, the template, the name that's going to build, create a random generated ID, and it's creating it. So if I go into my PowerVC, now, and I look under something called SMC, there we go. We can see our application VM is being built from a template within CAM. Okay, so that's going to take a couple of minutes, but what you can do is the one of the, the, the important areas around CAM is we can have new versions. So if I go to edit the template here, now if this was a GitHub um, template, then I would obviously update GitHub and I would um, publish the, the new branch to um, to CAM. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm, it's a flat file one. So if I manage the template, I can see here that I've got a various versions. Oh, I've already created one. So we've used version 1.0.0. I've actually created one just to speed things up. I've created 1.0.1, .1, which is a clone from 1.0.0, as, as you would expect. And I've just changed a few little things in here. So all I've done is I've not changed the variables, but if I go back to edit edition and change this version one, I've changed the, the parameters a little bit. What I've done is I've, if, I, if you can see it, the screen's very small, I'm afraid. I've said that, um, 
the the number of instances is hidden. Um, I've said a few other things. So I've said the number of instances are hidden. So if I went to deploy that version, and I selected the version, the new version I've created 1.0.1, .1, and went to deploy template. What you should see is the the information around number of instances has gone. So I've hidden that from the user. So the user who's deploying this no longer has the option to change the number of images that they want to be deployed from this template. Now, you could obviously hide mo multiple things in here, but it's just to show you that you could def change instances as you go along. You can change any of the variables that you, you need to, should you want to within the version control and things. So that's happily building along there. So when that's building, I wanted to show you a something else within. That's going to take a couple of minutes. Let me just check the log. So under deployed instances, yeah, it's still going. It's gone for three minutes. So what I could do here, if I wanted to, ah, no, it's not finished building yet, so I can't do the, the modify. But when, when the log, when, when the build is completed, I could modify my instances. If I go into, so let's go back to Windows, show where this was now. Under deployed instances, I can see my instance name. I can say what template it used. And then if I view the details again, you'll recognize that it's gone back into where we were earlier. Now, it's finished now. Okay, so it's finished to deploy. So if I click on Power VC, yep, that's active. That's good. What I could do now, I could modify this instance. So I could say, actually, you're currently running on version 100. I know that. I want you to move to zip 101. Now, all I've done there is I've changed the number of, I've hidden an instance, and that's not much good to me. So what I want to do is I want to manually alter this environment. So if, say, for example, I decided that this deploy, even though it's already deployed, I actually wanted them to be two application VMs. I didn't just want the one. So I change number of instances to two, and I just click on plan changes. Plan changes goes along. What it does, it's now saying, OK, I know what the current environment looks like. I know what you want the new environment looks like. Let's make a, a schema of what the changes would be. And it should tell me down here that all I want to do is create a second VM. So in other words, the first VM didn't have a number against it. This one has a number one. And obviously, it would then give it a new name. But it would keep the same uh, use, um, unique ID. And all the rest of the information is exactly the same. So all I changed was that. So if I click on Apply, so the reason it's asking me to confirm is because we could have changed that from two to one. What we'll do, it'll go away and delete one of the VMs for you. In this case, I'm just adding a new VM to my current configuration. And hopefully within my log file, we should start to see that action being deployed by, by CAM. So there we go. CAM's worked out all the information it needs using Terraform. And then we should start seeing, there we go. So there's our second VM being built within the same instance. So we've got the same unique ID. So that's pretty cool. So that's nice if you want to deploy a template. Deploying a template is a little bit restrictive because you could, in that template, you could put, oh, I want to build two VM, two application VMs and a date-based VM, but it's all within the same provider. So it's all within either OpenStack or it's all within um, ICP or it's all within the IBM Cloud. What if we want to deploy templates across multiple clouds? Okay. Stu, just to interrupt very briefly, I'm not sure we can answer this question, but um, somebody's asking, how does this cloud connector work with multiple subscriptions in Azure? Okay, uh, I'm not quite sure what you mean, but I mean, if there's multiple user ID connections to Azure, so in other words, you have a um, uh, different accounts for different subscription types, then I assume it's like the IBM Cloud or the AWS one, you get a unique um, ID and API key for each one. So you'd have multiple Azure connections, each with a different API um, authority to, to connect to those different subscriptions. Okay, thank you. That, it's nice having a library of templates and all these templates that we, we can deploy. But what happens if we want to build these into a multi-cloud scenario? So what if we wanted to, to, to to do a, maybe a three-tier deployment across various um, clouds. So what we do is we have this um, 
service templates. So I've got two that I created previously that we'll, we'll deploy later, but let me show you how we create a service and how we build a service around this. So we create a new service, we give it a name, so like three tier build, there we go, just an example name. We can't have um, letters, no, we can't start with, let's say tier three build. And for, for those of you who are aware of or were aware of IBM Cloud Orchestrator, this is fairly similar to here. We can have add features so users can see what it is that they're, they're doing when it comes to the catalog. But we have a composition screen here. Now, this is going to be very difficult for you guys to read, I'm afraid, because the, the graphics on it aren't as good as they could be. So say we wanted to deploy a, a three-tier environment. So let's say it was going to be Tomcat, Apache, across here. Now, in previous, when we were doing template deployed, we saw templates, but we didn't see any Helm charts. But now, because we're doing a service provider, it brings in the Helm charts from our ICP environment. So here is one of those Helm charts that we saw earlier when I went through my catalog on ICP. So it's the IBM Tomcat dev chart. We drag it into there. It goes away, and it's now querying my ICP environment to bring back all the relevant information about which cloud should it go on, what's the template name, um, what the versions are available. But what happens when this stops spinning, it then gives me the choice down here of where I want to connect it. So I want to put it on my ICP environment. Of course, we could have multiple ICP environments. So it's going to wait to make sure that that's a valid host for this Helm chart. So this is pulled in the Helm chart from my ICP. I'm going to go and tell it to go back and deploy to my ICP. And then we can select parameters should we need to. We can change any of the ingress ports, the ingress ports. We can change the node type if we wanted to, and we can save that. Then let's say the, the middleware type of thing we wanted. We had a, um, um, a VM on IBM Cloud. So this is out in the public cloud. So here we go. I've created a template, which is called um, WMVM. I drag that into my flow. At the moment, in this version, everything is um, sequential. In the latest version, I believe it's parallel. I do want to upgrade it just at the moment, just in case anything went wrong before today's demo. It tells me that the only connection that's available is the IBM Cloud, so going out to my public cloud, and some parameters should I should I need to put them in. Okay. No, I should have put an SSH key in there. I'm not going to be deploying this one anyway. And then finally, I've got a template which deploys a back-end Oracle database for me. So I'm going to drag that in as the third option. Again, obviously, this screen is not the greatest, but you'll see that I've got a flow here going on, and you'll see that the version, the Oracle DB one go, wants to go to my OpenStack Power VC environment, and some parameters if I wanted to change the number of instances that I've got within that. So I would save that, and I would then publish that. When the publish, it goes away and checks that the syntax is OK. And then we've got some parameters down here that we could change if we want to. So again, these are what you've seen on the main composition page. We, you'll see the, the ICP Tomcat, the Debian VM in IBM Cloud, and then our Oracle VM. We can go and change these if we wanted to. Now, I'm not going to, because what we've got now is we've got a draft service here that's available. I can edit this because it's still in draft mode. The minute I publish it, I can go and edit it. So here's one that I have published this morning. So it's my three-tier cloud deployment, so exactly the same format. If I view it, it tells me some information about it. It tells me we can, well, we'll look in the composition in a minute. And um, but let me just deploy this one for you now. now we, so if I click on deploy. It tells what service plan it's going to use. It tells me it's going to build an Apache Tomcat and IBM Cloud Private. It can build an application VM in the public cloud, and it's going to build a database in my private cloud. I click on Next. It wants an instance name. So SMC, this is demo two, isn't it? I'm going to go away and create an instance. So it's now go away and submitted that order. If we go back to the library, we should see now that it's been ordered. So you can't put something into, so you can on this one example, you could retire this service if you wanted to. You can't retire or delete a service that's in order. In other words, somebody's placed an order against this service. So if we look, so 
that will now under deployed instances have a service so if we click on services here we go S smc demo 2 let's look at the details tell me where it is at the moment so at the moment it's already done the first one so it's done the tomcat one so let's check that so back on my icp if i go into deployments if this flow is one deployment fail it will stop a flow yes so if something um fails in a sequential flow it will fail the um fail the deployment um so here is the one i've just created here so obviously this was the first step with the tomcat if i can click on launch here if i wanted to yeah and it brings up my tomcat page so that's all ready it's now in the progress of building my next instance which is the ibm cloud instance so if i log on to my ibm cloud portal you'll see at the moment i've got zero devices in my cloud portal if i refresh that hmm. okay you might you might be able to see whether one demo one fails and it fails the whole thing at the moment have a look so it's in progress let's look at the log file to see what how far down the progress it is oh yeah, it's definitely creating it so so let me just go back in this log to show you what it's doing here so the first stage is it's it's corrected to icp it's created this demo instance we saw so that was the tomcat one so that's gone and done it's created the next one it's connected to ibm cloud it's created the next instance here and the values that it's using down here so it's going to use the data center london 02 which is one of ibm soft layer ones it's going to give it call it smc app vm and then down here we can still we see it creating so that should be there unless i've just lost comms to my um now there we go so here is now is my cloud vm in public ibm cloud okay so that one's going ahead so if we take a quick look while that's building on the actual service that I've just deployed to show you what it looks like. It was this one, wasn't it? If I view it. Ignore that message. I don't know why that message comes up at the top briefly. Um, composition. So you'll recognize this is exactly what we saw when I built my um, my template earlier we've got a it grays it out because this is published we can't edit it so but we can see that it's got an ibm community in other words it's the helm chart that goes to icp it's got a debian vm that goes to ibm cloud and it will eventually have an oracle db that goes to my power vc environment if i look at the parameters again you'll recognize these as what we used earlier so you can see where it's going what it's going to call it where it's going to go so in this case it's picked london 02 data center and eventually my um, oracle db vm will get built if you wanted to look at the source code you can or i wouldn't really recommend it but you can just basically see that here we've got provisioning and we can see there's a helm chart and it's going to icp so exactly repeating the information that we've seen in the previous screens we go back to our deployed instances now so we deployed that instance demo 2 we can see what progress it's making. Okay, it's still going. Okay, so while that's going, I just wanted to show you something else. So we deployed an instance earlier. Remember we deployed this template demo one. So here is our demo one instance that we deployed. So it's running, the other one is still in progress. So the instance which is backed by the service is still going on, which we'd expect. So if I wanted to destroy my resources from CAM, so in other words, just destroy those application VMs that I wanted earlier, it would let me go away and destroy it. So if I click on destroy there, so destroy removes it from the endpoint. So destroy actually gets rid of it from the endpoint of the cloud that you're talking to. So if I go back to Power VC now, you should see, yep. Yeah. So my two application VMs that I created in the first demo are now deleting. So obviously we need to make sure that whoever has access to this, like they can within most of the um, cloud provider instances can only delete and manage their own Terraform environments, which they can do. And then if we click on our services again, let's just see where that one's going. 
maybe I shouldn't have clicked off delete, put a bit more load on my servers, and that's going to be a good idea. Okay, so the demo 2 one now is still in progress, it's still building, um, but we should see very shortly. Well, it's been building my IBM Cloud environment, so IBM Cloud is obviously very slow today for nearly five minutes. If we click on, sorry, I'm clicking on file there, activity log, it flips between the two instances. So 0, 0 is the ICP instance, and 0, 1 is my Terraform instance in the IBM Cloud. And then when this is created, we should see the instance has finished. Okay, so while that's on current going, I'm going to show you the third demo that I wanted to do today. So again, that's good. We've 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 built a from a template to a single cloud provider. In our case, we we did it to uh, Power VC OpenStack. We've done a multi-tier provider, so we've done one to a con containerized ICP environment. We've done an application server out to the IBM Cloud, and we did an internal VM database to our Power VC server. What if we wanted to create a service that was um, Sorry, I've gone to the wrong box there. That was, we wanted some um, information around there. We wanted some intelligence around the actual service. So what we could do is we could create a service that had a decision point in it. So the user has to make a decision point. So let's have, let's call something cloud, let's call it Mongo choice, or just call it Mongo. So say we wanted to deliver a Mongo database service to our, our end user, and we wanted them to select which cloud that they could have. Uh, I'm not going to pull descriptions in here. You'll see it, it just speed things up a little bit. But if under my template choice over here, oh, sorry, let me just make the decision first. We need to drag a decision tree in. The decision tree basically says, OK, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to call it um, uh, destination cloud. And I'm going to add a parameter called cloud. OK. And then under here, it asks you for cases. So I'm going to say, Case one is going to be IBM Cloud Cloud Private. Let's spell. Cloud two, case two is going to be IBM Public Cloud. And case three is going to be um, Open Stack Private Cloud. Okay, so we'll save that just while I'm going along. What I can then do, because obviously there's going to be a template for each of those environments, there's a Helm chart that provides MongoDB, which is already provided. We drag that into the first choice. Again, it's going to ask you about the, the parameter changes that's going on, querying that Helm chart to make sure everything does, is as expected and where it can deliver that to. It, might have a different a few different versions I could install if I wanted to. I'm going to go with the default 113 and I'm going to say it's in my ICP environment. I could have my, uh, I, I could even choose, so if you see on the, on the left hand side, as well as um, IBM Cloud option for Mongo, there's also um, a vSphere option for Mongo should I want it. But for this case, let's just say I'm going to have. Um, MongoDB on public cloud template. Again, it will fill in the information that is needed. And then I'm going to have my OpenStack. So in other words, my VM within my private cloud as a Mongo database server as well. So these are all templates that I've created that do the installation of Mongo post deployment. OK, and save that. And it would be, obviously, if I published it, it would be available. So if I go back without publishing it, you will see that it's there. But this is the one I've created, which does exactly the same job, but I created it this morning. So if I go to deploy my multi-cloud environment, select my plan, what you'll now see is that I've got a, a choice to make. So I've got, uh, what do I call this, uh, demo three, one. I've got a choice. So it says, which cloud do you want to put your MongoDB on? So I've got Cloud Private, uh, Public Cloud, or OpenStack Cloud. So in this case, let's say I want to go to I want to go to my private VM Power VC Cloud. 
create the instance and it's gone away and done that. So if I go back to my instances now, I can see by the way that demo two is now completed. So if I go back onto here, let me refresh my pad, this is not refreshed itself properly. There's my MongoDB that's been created because I selected Power VC Cloud to be able to go and deploy this database to through my, my decision tree within my, my service catalog. So that's, oops, sorry, one window. That is now showing that we can deploy, make a decision, we can deploy across multiple clouds, and we can deploy um, a template should we just require to deploy a template. One of the good things about this, now I've published this service. So if I go back onto here and look at um, my, my library again, these are the ones that I publish. So they've got the green light, that been published and they've both been ordered. If I go back onto my cloud private catalog now, and I search for SMC, what did I call it? I called it SMC Hybrid Cloud and SMC MongoDB Multi-Cloud. You'll see these now in my, in my catalog on ICP. So I can order this, I can order this service through ICP. So the MongoDB multi-cloud again, I'm going to select, I want a standard plan. I'm going to give the name, so SMC demo 3.2, second version. Namespace, I'm just going to put it in anyone. And then again, this is the, the option that you saw earlier. It, ICP now is giving the option of where I want to put this time. Let's say I want to put it on my public cloud, get rid of that. I don't know, and I've gone away and installed it from ISP. So I'm installing, I, mean, I can I can drive a VM installation or a, an environment installation from ICP. I can drive it through um, CAM. Obviously, if I want to drive it through PowerVC, I can do it single instances, but I can't do the orchestration side of thing. This has let me do the orchestration side from two different sources. Obviously, you wouldn't normally do that. You do it from, you pick one and you stick to that one, but uh, I just wanted to show you the, um, the, um, the, the options available. So if I now go to my deployed um, templates, we can now see, it's shortened off name, I've now got the, um, the SMC demo 3-2. So that's, that was the one that I called from ICP at, to deliver a VM in my IBM cloud. The one that I called earlier from, where's that? Sorry, the one I called earlier is still there, but that's obviously going to, that's doing a MongoDB on Red Hat in my OpenStack VM environment. So I should be able to check both. Yep, so there's my MongoDB that I was driving from CAM. If I refresh that, it should have got through to the stage now, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. There's my MongoDB being delivered in the IBM cloud. It's actually picked Amsterdam because I didn't specify where I wanted it to go. I just let it pick. So it's gone to the Amsterdam soft layer environment data center. Okay, Oops. that's quite a lot to get to. Let me just see where. Um... So a lot of these slides of what, what I've just done are in here. So I wanted to give you the option of seeing them in slide deck as well as the video as well. So um, the, 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 um, PDF or PowerPoint that Joe is going to attach to the meeting will have all these slides information in there to show you how it's all done. I've shown you that demo, I've shown you that demo, and I've shown you that demo. So this is now what we've got. We've got IBM Cloud Manager sat in the middle, which is managing our off-premise cloud, our on-premise cloud, and being able to deliver multiple environments across those cloud and mix of those environments along with decision trees. And we could even make REST API calls to make those decisions should we need to. Um, some of my templates are coming down from GitHub, and some of my templates are coming from a local file on IBM Cloud Manager within the database on there. So it's a single point of control around your automation and build. So, uh, and that's that's it, I think, for me, Jyoti. Um, hopefully, that's covered everything. Sorry if I've been quite quick, but uh, not not at all. Um, it's been great, to, and I hadn't appreciated how key the cloud automation manager pieces in all of this. 
um, speci especially if you've got traditional workloads of I IBMI and AIX workloads, uh, and you're also trying to do some of the um, new Linux things. So um, thank you so much. There's a couple of questions just popped up uh, if you want to yeah. answer so, those. Jan, um, you know, you don't need multi-cloud manager prerequisite for CAM. Um, cloud multi-cloud manager does support the latest version of CAM, but you don't need multiple cloud uh, multi-cloud manager. Um, when you install CAM, so CAM doesn't need to be installed as part of ICP by default. It says a Helm chart should you want to install it further on down the line. But obviously, if you've only got ICP, you can't manage any non-ICP environments. So um, ICP on its own, if all you're doing is ICP, CAM if you want to to, to hook them into multiple clouds. Um, okay. Differences and similarities from ICP and then OpenShift. Um, um, there's, it's the same basic principle of containerized management. So um, uh, we, we're going to be doing a lot more on OpenShift this year. So I'm, I'm sure that if Jody wants, I can do an, an OpenShift um, demonstration as well later on this year. Yeah, that would be great, actually. Um, and then you can maybe give a little bit of the positioning in, in that session. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, so if you've got any more questions, keep them coming through here for another few minutes. Um, I, whilst uh, you're thinking of questions, I'll just tell you a little bit about next session. So uh, session number 86 will be on May the 15th, and it will be an IBMI session. Uh, yesterday we announced IBMI 7.4, a new release. Uh, and also uh, Technology Refresh 6 for 7.3. Uh, lots of enhancements, and amongst this is something called DB2 Mirror for I. So I'm organizing a session uh, for, for the new things, and we'll send you information as soon as um, the, the session has been finalized. So I'm hoping to have either Tim Rowe from Rochester or one of his colleagues um, do that session uh, in May, so save the date. Um, and then further on, I am looking at other sessions as well. I just haven't got dates organized yet. Okay, there is a question about CAM pricing and licensing, um, which neither of us have those details to, to hand. Um, so we'll have to get back to you, Mike, on that one. I know it's provided as part of um, um, ICP Enterprise Edition, but whether there's other versions, I, I don't know, Mike. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. I don't think there are any more questions. I will post the replay materials, the recording and the slide deck, uh, hopefully a little bit later on today. Um, and if you have not subscribed to the series and would like to receive notifications of upcoming sessions and replay links and so on, please send me an email. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you so much, Stu. Um, great session, lots of uh, useful demos uh, and um, yeah, taking us through, through all the different options and how you can do this. So thank you very much. And thanks, everyone, for joining. No worries. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording.